Hey everybody, Cole here, and I am the man behind at die to disc on Instagram. Some of you may have seen one of my posts on Reddit, and I got a lot of people asking, how do I make that happen? This is what I'm talking about. Making your disc look like this. Get those streaks on it through a process of dying. So, real quick, I'm going to attempt to show you guys how to do it, and I apologize ahead of time. This is done on my phone. I am not set up for this type of video, but I wanted to try to help you guys out. All right. So before we get started, I again want to apologize. Again, this was shot by myself on my phone. You might get motion sickness from it. I am not a great videographer, but the information is still very useful if you're looking to dye your own disc or even if you just want to see how I do it. Now, that being said, I do just want to thank some people real quick. First off, Chandler Fry, you know, the guy was awesome to work with. I messaged him looking for a white disc, and he got it shipped out. It must have been the day I bought it because it got here in three days. So please go support your local disc golfers or your favorite pros by buying their tour stamps. Uh, I'm going to link Chandler Fry's Instagram in the description below because he was absolutely awesome to work with. And let's be honest, this stamp is awesome. I'm also going to link my own Instagram below uh, so that you guys can follow me and see some more stuff that I have coming out. Uh, I also wanted to thank the entire main disc golf community. Um, you know, we have awesome players up here, awesome courses and course owners. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about the entire community. Especially wanted to thank people at Pleasant Hill Disc Golf. You know, Christy uh, displayed and sold a lot of my dies when I first started. And I can't thank her enough for that. Um, but really, the entire disc golf community here is awesome. Also, last but not least, I wanted to thank the Disc Golf Dyers community on Facebook. Uh, I'm not on Facebook anymore. But for a few years, they were a huge help to me. All those people there, you know, just to name a few, Nick Marchbanks, uh, Laura Myers, and Corey Wilkes, all great people. If you're into dying discs, definitely that is a good place to start uh, after this video, of course. So I hope you guys enjoy and I hope I can help you guys learn some. All right, first off, let's talk about supplies. You're going to need a base. I would like to use just a regular Ultimate Frisbee disc. Find them for 5-10 bucks at your local sporting goods store. I like to use wooden ruler. Rubber gloves. You don't need them. I recommend them. Naturally, you're going to need the disc that you're looking to dye. I use a spoon or a fork for stirring um, the mixture together. A toothpick to help get out all the air bubbles. Q-tips for spreading the dye, and then the dye itself. So I use two different companies. I use these little things are from I Dye Poly, and this is from Pro Chem. This is their disbursement dyes. Uh, great company. I prefer their blue and their yellow are definitely far superior to what I've gotten from I Dye Poly for their blue and yellow. Then, obviously, we're going to use shaving cream for this. Now, the one thing I'm going to need that is not pictured is going to be warm water. That I will bring over to the sink and get it mixed up. All right, so real quick, we're going to start by applying shaving cream right into the base. Some people might mix it in a bowl and then dump it in. I prefer to do it this way. Just find it to be a little bit easier. Alright, I figured you guys wouldn't want to wait and watch me fill this up, so I just cut it real quick and put in a decent starting amount. This amount might change depending on how much I end up getting with after I add water. So, I'm going to go ahead and add some water, and I'll cut back in a second. Alright, so I ended up having to add just a touch more shaving cream, but now you see I have the mixture of warm water and shaving cream down to a consistency I like kind of like pudding nice and uh, watery but it still has a little bit of like hold to it that's what we're looking for that's what's gonna help us adopt those streaks 
now. Got it kind of smoothed out on here, making sure everything's covered. And I'm going to take a toothpick and just run it through there quickly as a preliminary pop on any air bubbles. Can't tell you if this actually works or if most people do it. It's just something that I've always done and I've found it helps. So we'll just do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so I've run the toothpick through it. Uh, you can kind of see from the lines. Now is the part that's gonna be a little bit harder to film. So I'm gonna do the best that I can, but I'm going to scrape the shaving cream off the top of this to make one smooth level surface. And for now, I'm gonna put it into the here because I'm working in the living room so that I can do this video for you guys and not by a sink. So let me do that. Uh, I'll at least show you how I get it started and then I'll probably have to cut. So we'll just make a nice flat sweep right there and we'll see you guys in a second. All right, so here we have a nice flat smooth surface. Kind of see the line where I paused. That's not a big deal. What is a big deal and that we're going to be looking for are air bubbles. See like this guy. Make sure we pop that. Come through some of these. And there will be some tricky ones. See how deep that one was? You couldn't even see it. This is going to be trial and error. You'll learn what to look for. Um, just kind of popping these as I see them. Some of the smaller ones we're not going to worry about. They won't affect it too much. And they'll probably pop as we're going. So I'm going to finish popping these. And I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, something I almost forgot. I do like to save some of this extra shaving cream mixture for when I get holes like this. I can just come in, fill that in. Realistically, that far on the edge, that's probably not going to affect the dye anyways. But I just wanted to show you guys, you know, one of the benefits to keeping that extra shaving cream mixture to help yourself out. Alright, so we have most of our big air bubbles popped. That's what we're looking for. Now, this is the part where you're going to want to toss on your gloves. I haven't mentioned this before. Obviously, you can see I've got a newspaper covering my work area. This stuff will stick to almost anything, and it is a pain to get out. You can get it out with 100% acetone but it's just easier to cover your workspace. You know, it's pretty volatile, don't get it on anything. And the gloves, because I have gone into work too many times with pink and blue, purple and red all over my hands, and it's very hard to remain professional. So what I'm gonna do, take my Q-tip, dip it in there, kind of tap off some of that access. So you see I have a little bit on here. Then I'm gonna bring it up, hold it above, my workstation and just tap it. Now you see you can barely see it on there but that's the kind of spread we're looking for. So I'll go back, kind of get a little bit more, tap it on. You're going to want to start with your light colors just because it makes it easier. So I'm going to use the same q-tip and just go through and do all of those colors. But, since it's all in one q-tip and I'm starting from the lightest to the darkest, that's going to make it come through a little bit better and I'm not going to have to worry about changing every time. Alright, so we started with Pro-Chem Yellow. Now we're going to move to I Dye Pink. And again, I'm just going to get some on there, tap some off, hold it above, and just tap it. And we're going to just move around as we're doing it. We're not looking for any specific pattern. We're just going to do a nice little color burst. And you see the yellow starting to show up more. As that sets on that uh, mixture, it's going to really set in there and that's going to help get you better spread on the colors as well. Alright, so there we have the yellow and the pink on. We're going to add some more colors and I'll just check in with you after every color. Alright, so I just added some I Dye Orange. And you can kind of see that starting to come out as well, mixed in with that yellow. The pink you're not really going to see, but it's kind of those darker flecks in there. 
Now, one of the things I wanted to mention is that keeping the Q-tip higher is going to give you a wider spread, but if you want to get tighter pockets of color, you can really just get closer and tap in, and that's not going to let the particles spread um, and really disperse as much. So I do that for my color burst. Um, like if I want crimson in the middle, got some red on the outside, uh, and then orange, and then yellow, and just kind of have it fade out. Uh, I'll, I'll do that, leaving a little bit of space in between, and then you can really just get a good color burst like that. But for this style, we just want, you know, colors spread out and kind of everywhere. So we're going to keep it nice and high. All right. Now we're kind of getting into some darker colors. So this is I dye red, just red. Uh, we're going to kind of hover it above and just lightly tap in. You're really not going to want to use a ton of this one. You know, this red will, it will come through. So we'll just tap that off. Try not to waste any of it. All right. Now we're going to move on to Prochem Blue. Uh, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, their teal also looks very, very good. However, when you're doing this style, it kind of looks very similar, so you can't tell too much uh, difference. So I just like to stick with one of them. Since this is really the only cool color I'm using, other than a little bit of purple, I'll add a little bit more of that in there. Alright, you can start to see lots of the colors are starting to come through onto the shaving cream, and that's exactly what we want. We want the powder to get wet and soak in. If you put too much dye on there, it will stay dry, and then you'll end up with dropout spots where the dye wasn't wet so it couldn't actually soak into the disc. Alright, and next up we are using I dye purple. Um, now this is just going to help really give us some some depth in there. The more colors we add, you're really going to be able to see that come through. So the purple comes out a lot. Uh, oh, so I just I just dropped a nice thick spot of it right there. So we'll pay attention to that. We'll remember, you know, that's going to come out pretty purple in that area. So I think, given that, probably enough purple for now. All right. Last but not least, we have probably the most volatile color of them all. This is the crimson red from I Dye Poly. Now, when I say volatile, I mean that's probably more than enough right on there and we're gonna hold this real high and just sprinkle it on there because you do not want a lot of that it will dominate all of the colors so that's what our base is gonna look like and I will check in with you guys in just a moment alright so before we go any further and as full disclosure I did notice this little spot right in here uh, looked a little bit empty, so I added a little bit of pink in there uh, just to make sure we're adding some color, keeping the whole thing nice and colorful. I like to use pink or yellow when I'm touching in spots like that because those are going to be the colors that are super understated because everything else is going to pull right through those. So it just kind of provides a backdrop for the other colors to help them really pop. But you can see here, we have our finished piece. I am a little worried. This spot in here looks like I might have gotten a little heavy handed. Uh, you'll remember that's where that purple kind of dropped out on me. So we'll see how that comes out. It doesn't look like any of it is dry, so we should still get color from it. And that's what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take... This disc, um, rinse it off real quick, dry it off, and then we're going to place it in. Alright, so I just want to apologize. I had to bring 
this mixture and the disc into the area where I let it set. Just a little uh, cabinet in the bathroom because obviously I'm not going to leave this sitting out for the 8 to 10 hours that I'm going to leave it uh, in the middle of the living room. So I apologize for the angle, but no real good spot to shoot it from. So what we're going to do is take the disc. Notice I'm not touching it, except for on the inside that's not going to get dyed because you don't want to get finger smudges on there, even though I am wearing gloves. And then I'm just going to find a centering point and drop. Then I'm just going to kind of take a weight. Let me see what I've got around. Uh, give me one second. Sorry about that, I wasn't fully prepared. So I'm gonna take two of the dies that I did not use. I'm gonna set this little uh, paper towel or down and I'm just gonna put that on it, press down, making sure to apply even pressure so that it really looks like everything's originating from the center. All right, so now I'm just gonna add that on there to add a little bit of extra weight. Um, and now we wait. So typically for this set, I like to let it set anywhere from eight to 10 hours. You can go up to 12 if you want, but really it's gonna be keeping an eye on it and seeing how far it's dropped. You don't want it resting at the bottom too much, but you'll get the hang of it after doing a couple. All right, so we've let this set overnight. Uh, I made a mistake and started a little early, so it's been sitting a little bit longer than I would have liked, but looks like it should be okay. I've brought it out to stainless steel sink because, like I said, this dye can be pretty volatile, and you don't want this getting all over your sink. I'm just going to get that started, pull it up. Bam. There you have it. You got some good streaks, some nice color. I dig it. All right, so I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you found it useful, and I hope it helps some of you, whether you're a first time dyer or just someone looking to add more streaks to their discs. Now, I will probably be looking at doing more videos on some of my other styles. But I think this one is kind of my favorite, and it appears to be most people's favorites. So, I figured we'd start with that one, and then work backwards. Um, so, once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.